Brethren, we thank God and welcome to this episode. This time we thank God that we are interacting again with his word. And this time we come sharing about friendship, the friends of Job. We talked about Job. We introduced about many, many things that actually Job went through. And now we, in this episode, talk about his three friends that came to visit him. And may we get something that we learn from these men, their interactions with Job during his difficult time. And may God speak to us through his, the scriptures because these men heard about their friend in trouble and they came. And so we'll talk about them. And remember Job was a man that God has had immensely blessed and he, calamity befell him. His wealth went, his health collapsed, his children died, and he remained virtually with nothing. His skin was devastated. Now, his friends hear about it and they come. You know, it is something that I've, I've been thinking through as well. These three friends are introduced in this book of Job, chapter 2, verse 11. Calamity has befallen Job. Trouble has come. And they hear about it. They did sit back in their home. They did sit back in their country. They trekked a long journey and they came. And here is what the Bible says in Job chapter 2, verse 11. And it says that when, now when Job's three friends had all this evil that had come upon him, they came each from his own place, Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namathite. They made an appointment together to come to show him sympathy and comfort him. Very important, standing out to show him sympathy and comfort him. And so in verse 12, and when they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize him. And they raised their voices and wept. And they tore their robes and sprinkled the dust on their heads towards heaven. And in verse 13, they sat with him on the ground seven days and seven nights. And no one spoke a word to him. For they saw that his suffering was very great. Now, friends, I come with these three men, Job's friends that came, one, to sympathize with him and comfort him. And their names have been mentioned, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. And the Bible says that they spent seven days with him and seven nights sitting, sitting on the ground with him, identifying with him. And for us as counselors, one of the virtues that we treasure is identifying with somebody you are talking with, coming to their level, coming to their level, understanding them, understanding the trouble, empathizing with them. You know, it is a point that actually this man had to show sitting on the ground with the job. And the Bible said that has said that actually they start without speaking a word. They were overwhelmed by the suffering, just like Job himself was overwhelmed by the trouble, was overwhelmed by the challenge. You know, trouble can come, grief can make you numb, speechless. Now this man became numb, spoke nothing, overwhelmed. And situations can come, and this is what this man were going through, just like their own, their friend Job had been. So they held their view. When they started speaking, of course, the people keep quoting this very much, that they thought that Job had 
a hidden sin. You begin reading from chapter 3, Job cursing the day of his birth, and they also spoke in tongues, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar. And then at another moment, Job would respond. Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar. Then Job would respond. You see, it was a dialogue. It, it was not a dialogue because there were three. They spoke one after another, alternately, but giving their views about the suffering, the cause of suffering. Who should suffer? The righteous person suffer. And so they held their views with the Job that the innocent don't suffer. And so that was the view that was there. And of course, many of us hold, why must you suffer? When you have been righteous, when you have been praying all the time, when you have been faithful to God all the time. And so that one, those, those are some of the questions as human beings at our level. It's only God who knows what he's doing, why he allows certain things to happen. Now, and so they also held a view that Job should come out and admit his sin and repent of it. And so these things happened that the words came, some of them were helpful, and some of them were hurtful. Helpful and hurtful. Of course, I can be speaking and consoling. But for me, what I bring out, number one, number one in all this, these three people coming to stand with Job. They are coming. And of course, the Bible says that they were his friends. Friends, it is important to have friends. It is important to have people that are closer to you. During nice times, you invite them for a party, you invite them to celebrate with you, you invite them to, to you know, to have good time with you, to love with you, to laugh with you, you know, to rejoice with you. And of course, the Bible does mention something. In Proverbs 17, 17, you know, he says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born in adversity. You know, friends. And then also another verse, another verse talks about a friend. A man of many friends may come to ruin like Job was, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. In this world, we need people who are around us. And God actually wired it in us that you cannot survive and live life alone. You need society, you need community to be with. And so for me, the point, the biggest point that I want to see about this scenario of suffering in the life of Job is friends coming when they had that Job had been befallen with a calamity. And our Lord Jesus Christ does mention something in Luke chapter 16. He was talking about making wealth, making friends. And then he said, use worldly wealth to make friends. Use worldly wealth to make friends. Let them be positions. Use worldly positions to make friends. And Jesus adds and says that when everything is all over, they will welcome you to their habitations. They will stand with you. Now Job teaches me a great lesson here, bringing about these men. Yes, they had their theology. Many times we based so much on their theology, on their discussion, on their debates, how they condemn and how they blame and how they speak all these words to Job, but they were there with him. For me, that is the bottom line. They had come. They were with him. And so they were telling him, man, you repent of the sin. Maybe there's something that you, some sin that you, that you committed. Repent. Do this, this. But they were there with him. And remember what the Bible says? That they sat on the floor, on the ground with him, speechless for the first seven days and for the seven nights. But their heart was with this man, Job. So friends, for me this comes out as critical. And I value the network of friends. 
you make invitations when you have good time, you are rejoicing. Is it a birthday? Is it a wedding? Is it an introduction? Which are now the, actually, these are the things, actually, we, we come out in big numbers, put on our attires and dress best because we are moving along with our friends. So make more friends. Reduce antagonisms that cause hatred. There are people who are all out to see everyone as enemies. Enemies add no value. Friends add value. Friends add color to the occasions. Now for Job's time here, his three friends sitting and just merely coming, the man questioned within himself, but he knew that these were his friends. Moving all the way, coming, giving all that they needed to give, that they spent time with him, talking over and over and over. So these three friends, we pick lessons here that they visited Job, and this visiting is important. One, you make friends. Two, this, they visited is to see him, console him. Know your friends and let your friends know you. Pray the Lord. Know your friends and let your friends know you. They visited him. They sat with him. They talked with him. They argued with him. For me, I thank God that I have read this and I purpose. May you make it a reason, may you make purpose that you know your friends and your friends know you. Very, very important. Now, these three, the Bible says they wept with the job, identifying with him in his agony. And surely they did. They cried with him. They saw him in a distance and they not recognize him. And they raised their voices and wept. Now, this is important, really. They showed their grief. They wept with Job. Now, true friends, true allies will stand with you. And so I encourage us, particularly maybe myself and of everyone, that people standing with you is critical and I have kept repeating it because it stands out in this book of Job. Responding to the pain of others, responding to the pain that others have is a point. Do you have a friend? Do you have friends? Do they stand with you? Do they respond with you? Do they identify with you? Do you identify with them? Of course, I can also have people who think that well, their friends should come. Their friends should identify with them. But they don't get out of so to identify with them. Now, Job, his friends came, identified with him. Now, they came because he had also be, you know, it is reciprocating what you do. So have friends and let them also have you. And so that you interact. And during difficult times, they stand with you. Now, these friends come. Paul puts it in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, that he rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. And friends, we also have friends that will surface when the times are good. Is it a party? Is it eating? Is it drinking? Is it rejoicing? People will come. But then there are these friends also who don't appear when the times are bad. But the encouragement that we have is Rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. So get out there and be all season friend. The appeal is all season friend. Good time friend and evil time friend. And so actually we encourage one another. We speak, we sing together. People come and sing to contender as a sing a song. And you know. So actually, there is life around you, even when you are sick, even when things are not well. There is hope beaming with the friends that come and speak, make friends. Now, one other thing actually that we learn from these friends of Job is that from silence, 
Silence comes because of being overwhelmed. We learned a lesson that when they arrived, they kept quiet for a moment, looked at Job. Things, the pain that actually was going through. Now, this silence, listen to me, that we learn not to hurry to say a word when someone is grieving. I have witnessed many things happen. Someone is grieving, someone is crying, and then someone comes and pats on the shoulder. Hey, my brother, don't cry. Don't cry like someone who is faithless. It is important, yes, stand there, tell them something. And someone could say, yeah, don't cry. Yes, it's okay, but the timing is the best. The timing is the issue. So we learn not to hurry. Not to hurry. It's a ministry of presence. I have learned this. Sometimes it may not be the words. Sometimes it may not be the song. But sometimes it may be just your being around. So this silence that we are talking about, yes, they were overwhelmed that they lacked what to say, but the presence matters a lot. So I just want to appeal to us all to offer, you know, one thing at a time. There's time to speak and it's time to keep quiet. Now, all this calls for wisdom. Wisdom to do right things at the right time. You may speak something very important, like I've said in some fora, that you may speak something at the moment when actually the timing is not due. And it makes no sense. And so timing is very, very important. And the wisdom God gives you to put your point across is very important. But the point here is the ministry of presence being there for someone to feel that, yes, my sister is here, my brother is here. So, you see, when at the, the moment when you keep quiet and I have said it before, I say somewhere else also, but silence can be golden. Now, in Proverbs 17, 28, that even a fool is considered wise when he keeps silent. Can you imagine a discerning person when he seals his lips? You see, there are times when you pour out and you think that you are pouring out, you are pouring out sense. You are pouring out encouragement. You are pouring out something that actually is bringing purity. Like I've seen people entering a home where people are weeping and say, Hey, Musilike, keep quiet. Keep quiet. Don't, no, no, don't make this confusion. Yes, um, I know that actually the Lord Jesus Christ, there was a moment when he went and chased out people where were crying, and, but he went to do something like that, the ministerial presence. But the timing is the best. Timing is the best. And so this is very important. You can silently support a friend. Can silently support somebody. And then this one is goes hand in hand with other things that like Jesus says that when you're giving someone, you one hand can give, but not, not, not another know that we're giving. That when you're giving, don't pronounce and say, go to the streets and shout and say, look, this is now all this you can support. I have had friends that have supported me, and it is more treasurable. Then pronouncing that everybody knows that okay, that shirt that he's putting on, I'm the one who gave him. Can you imagine? Someone can mention that. That that house that he's sleeping in, I'm the one who built for him. Now, it is important. Yes, people let people know that you okay, have supported me. But um, Jesus, the Bible mentioned something actually do it. And so that okay, this person also has his or her self-worth. You have supported. Yes, let people know that you have supported, but let there be some self-worth there. And so James, chapter 1, verse 19, the Bible says that actually everyone should be quick to listen, but slow to speak. And this is the counsel that comes in the New Testament, but exhibited by this man in the book of the Old Testament, the book of Job. So a wise friend, listen to me, a wise friend will listen fast will observe fast. And as researchers, as counselors, as preachers, as teachers, as every person, 
that knows what to do will first observe, listen first, look at the look of things, consider the context. For me, this one helps me. You may find people speaking and then you find, just land with something that is relevant. And so for, you, so for you to be relevant, be in consonance with the situation. Know what is happening first. Now, these people arrived and they looked at Job and they saw what he was going through. And so again, they started the debate. What was Job himself saying? And in chapter 3, he begins by saying, Now, this day of, I was born, God put it. Do what? He says, after this job, opened his mouth and cast the door of his, his bath. And he said, let the day perish on which I was born. And the night that I, that said, a man is consumed. Let that day be darkness. And when he spoke, spoke, spoke. Now his friends were listening and then they fell into line. They started their conversation following one another. My friends, I've spoken much more about this because it comes out as a very vivid point, his three friends coming to speak, and he gave their theology. And when they spoke, they brought challenging scenarios on the table, their own interpretations of sin and suffering, like all of us do. You do have your own interpretation of sin and suffering. Given an opportunity, each one will give their own view. Yes, this man brought their view on the table. They brought their own understanding of who God is. Now, Job also listened to them when they were talking, and I like the way they were doing it. One after another. Now, dear friends, a dialogue, a conversation of sorts, we need to listen to one another. This one is a very, very big virtue as well. We need to listen to one another, even in the house, in the debate, in the conversation, Whatever forum, we need to listen to one another now. These three friends, each one speaking, one keeping part and listening, another keeping part, another listening, and things like that. So this one, the flow of the conversation comes out very, very well. And so they represented their own opinions at Job's time. Now you represent your own opinion too. I represent my own opinion as well. Now, but all of us, we need to flow systematically well. And so the point will be driven. Like these people's points are driven clearly, each one, their own theology, their own understanding. And so they asked challenging questions. Eliphaz asked challenging questions in chapter 4, verse 17. Bildad asked challenging questions in chapter 8, verse 3. Zophar asked challenging questions in Job 11, 7 to 8. But they also offered advice. This is something that I have treasured as well. Now, someone can come with a challenging question, but lives in suspense. Now, these ones came with the menu. Questions, 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 yes. But then they also offered a device. Eliphaz offered a device, chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. Bildad, 8, 8 to 9. Zophar, 11, 13. And so... It was all round, balanced a little bit. Challenging questions here, you know, advice here and there. And so we need to talk one another. We need to speak one another. We need to encourage one another. So like anyone else can be, you and I, or even Job's friends and Job himself, from time immemorial up to now, they also misfired. They also misunderstood Job's situation. Someone can misunderstand your situation. These friends misunderstood. Sometimes they stumbled in their application, in their theology, in their wisdom. Now, we learn something here. When does criticism come? Sometimes criticism can, can come to add injury to insult or insult to injury, whatever it is, but to compound the problem, to compound the challenge. And so Job acted so much, many, many of them, not Job alone, but on assumption, and um, sometimes in some cases are choosing Job of these things like that, but bottom line, they were there, and this is what happens humanly, and people ask these questions. 
However, they stuck with Job. They grieved with him. Very important. They spent time with him. Very, very important. Now, may we emulate this man to stand with a friend. Now, next thing is never assume that we know more than we can do. Never assume that you know more than you can do. Be there for somebody and be there with somebody and bring relevance to the situation. Bring life to the situation. I thank God for the friends of Job and they spoke the understanding, they are what, but they were standing with Job. They sat with him. They spoke with him. The ministry of presence, we go out there to support one another, to stand with one another, to pray with one another, to sing with one another, to stand with one another. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God be with you. Amen.